Let me share a little bit about university settlement. Uh, to work with over 2,000 seniors a year, um, we've built a campus with several locations, different types of spaces, so that we can do different types of programming. These include a theater, two NYCHA senior buildings, a traditional neighborhood center, a NORC based in a Mitchell Lama um, uh, development, ESL classes, children's classes, art classes, a mental health clinic, and an intergenerational center with exercise studios, a gym, a pool, and loads of lifelong learning opportunities. There's lots of leading and volunteering by the participants in all of these spaces, meaning by the elders from our community. And these are supported with crucial social services, housing services, financial supports, crisis intervention, home-based care, great nutritional supports at home and in our centers, and mental health care. And specifically in the arts, with Robin, as I said, we've built programs for the full range of ages, interests, and abilities in our, um, among our elders, in the, from wild dancing under a disco ball in our neighborhood center, or performing on stage, to doing vis visual arts in a more circumscribed life at home, um, in our home-based uh, services, and with caregivers, or even at the bedside in the hospital. So we've built not only our own capacity from our commitments to the arts, but we've also received NEA funding and city and philanthropic funding from people in this room um, to teach artists and senior centers uh, every year for the last 10 years. This spring will be our 10th um, national uh, symposium on creative aging, and we've trained over 450 artists and senior serving um, administrators from around the country, about 50% from New York City, and many of you probably in the room have participated, um, to build in this field. So I'm kind of here both in the arts part and in the senior part, and that's really because I'm from a settlement house. So I know I was here to speak from the seniors, but I'm perspective, but I'm actually here speaking from a settlement house perspective, because I think that's part of the answer. Um, so much of work, what we're calling on, uh, calling for today is simply more of what our progressive settlement house founders launched over 135 years ago. Arts are at the heart of all vibrant communities, and settlement houses have known that from our origins. Almost all of them were built with theaters for spaces to perform and to make art together. My Settlement House has a theater that doubles as a dance studio and triples as a meeting and learning space. And it was here at the turn of the last century that the Metropolitan Museum of Art brought the very first community exhibit and literally thousands of Lower East Siders came to view incredible works of art from the Met in their very own neighborhood, proving that the huddled masses yearning to breathe free, we're also yearning for art. It was there uh, in this theater where youth and children and elders made music together, where um, my friend Lily Miller in the 1920s came as a six or a seven year old and found her way for the entirety of her life. She's now 99. And a few years ago when she was 96 and having a one woman show of her amazing ceramics that she makes at uh, the Greenwich House. So hello to the Greenwich House, congratulations on your award. She, um, I got a chance to meet her and see her art and she said, everything I ever loved, dance, music, clay, stemmed from my participation in classes at University Settlement on the Lower East Side. All of these wordless arts that said everything to me. So creative aging in Lily started when she was six at a settlement house. Our theater is also where Eleanor Roosevelt volunteered to teach dance as a young woman, also introducing her boyfriend, Franklin, to the world of New York's densest tenement neighborhood in all of its vitality and poverty. And so, of course, I take credit for the New Deal and the WPA. 